Oops. Doesn't look like I have anyone else in the waiting room, so I think we're good. Oh, sorry. Andy's already in the meeting, so we're good. Yep. He's traveling, but he thought he'd have a good enough cell signal to be able to log on. I don't see him yet, though. So. Oh, um, he answered the meeting invite, so maybe, maybe he's running late. Dick Strasberg. Are we recording? Yep. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mockler. Here. Packard. Here. Smith. Here. Manning. Here. Any conflict of interest declarations? Hearing none, approval of agenda. I move approval of the agenda. I'll second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Butler. Yes. Motion approved. Are there any visitors to be heard? Hearing none. Um, jail and law enforcement discussion. Who would like to start? Okay. <laughs> I'm Steve Waller. I'm chair or the former chair of the jail and law enforcement uh, center facility committee. We're in charge of selecting. I have also now volunteered to help facilitate the educational program for this upcoming bond issue. And in the process of doing that, I've come to realize that between now and June, there's not enough time for education. Uh, it is a big bond. It has a lot of concerns associated with it. People are, are quite concerned about the dollar amount. There is need for a lot of education. And to do that between now and June, I think just simply won't happen. And unfortunately, uh, plain talk opinion we had last week uh, really set us back because now anyone looks at the project, all they see is the word jail. They don't see the fact that there's a police department. They don't see the fact that there's going to be the 911 communication center. All they see is jail. I'm not going to sit there and sugarcoat it. I think November is going to be enough. It's going to be a challenge to make this succeed, but we have a chance in November. I think right now, and I'll put it on the table, if we go to a June election, we will lose. And that's, I think if you lose a second time, you're never gonna be able to go back for the third time. So I'm really asking if the commission would consider the possibility of moving that date from the June to the November date. I understand it will cost the project more money. Perhaps Matt and me and other people get together and find some way to tweak the design a little bit to save some. I want this to happen. I've been working with this now since the beginning of 2019. But I, I'll be honest, I just don't see it happening. The education is too, it's too much to do in too short a time. Really, June is not really the thing we need to be looking at. Early voting starts next month. That's my, my plea to the commission. So I, I'd like to add a few things to that and maybe also ask Kelsey um, Bayer to, uh, uh, to talk a bit. Um, you know, it, I, I, I think in my conversations with Kelsey, 
um, it's uh, likely that the city does not want to bond the entire amount. They don't want to borrow the entire amount. Um, and so we may, we may be able to decrease the dollars asked for um, because of that. Um, the second part is that, um, and this is, this is really a, a question, um, the second part is that, um, you know, there was a Senate Bill 32 this year, um, which failed for reasons I'll explain, and it called for $38.3 million to build a uh, corrections facility in Rapid City for women, 20 acres, uh, 208 beds, um, updated costs. Uh, the last time they looked at it, it was 28 million. This time it was 38.3 million, but that's for 20 acres and 202 beds. And so I, I'm trying to figure out why our costs are as high as they are. Now, this bill failed because the legislature has other ideas um, about the state's correction system that may very well affect us. I think what the state has worked out, the legislators have been discussing, um, is that they would like more inmates to be incarcerated closer to home. And there are some very good reasons for this. When I worked for the Connecticut Department of Corrections in the 70s, it had moved to that model. Um, so creating, you know, essentially sending inmates to um, uh, smaller regional corrections facilities um, six months prior to release, release and then, um, you know, in those same facilities, housing people who had sentences of a year or less, which is what our county jail does. Um, so um, what the state did this year was they passed a concurrent resolution in the legislature. Um, and, and, and when I say passed, it wasn't just a little. Um, the House, it passed 68 to one, the Senate, it passed 35 to zero. It was to conduct an interim study examining local jails and opportunities for collaboration with state correctional plans. And very specifically, they say there may be strategic opportunities for collaboration among the states, the state and counties to efficiently and effectively meet state and local needs. Um, they taught they call for strategic partnerships among state and local officials um, to, uh, uh, you know, for correctional needs. And then they finally say that um, they are establishing a um, local correctional needs interim study, or sorry, interim study regarding local uh, correctional needs across the state and opportunities for collaboration within the state's co correctional plan so that uh, efficient and effective solutions um, among local and state leaders can be realized. So that suggests to me that the state is kind of rethinking its correction strategy and there would be opportunities um, possibly for state subsidy, um, possibly for um, some kind of a cooperative effort. Um, so that, that's, a, that's, a big, that's a big uncertainty right now that won't be resolved until the summer. Um, the, the last thing that they did was um, they uh, uh, passed the Senate Bill 144 um, and they created in the state treasury an incarceration construction fund. Um, and they, uh, the intent is to fund it after the interim study reports back on the form that the state correction system um, you know, will take. And, you know, I think South Dakota is a little late to the game, but I, I think what they're doing is basically following, um, you know, or, or talking about following um, national best practices in uh, incarceration. So, you know, this is kind of a, a sea change in, I, in, in the, I don't know, in the context that, uh, that we're working here. So, you know, in summary, um, you know, my, my, my concerns are, are we bonding the right amount? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure we are, um, both because of where the city's going with this, but also, you know, just, uh, you know, trying to figure out why our facility is so much more expensive 
um, than a much, much larger state facility. We could say, okay, well, the law enforcement center adds cost to it, but we also know that the per square foot cost of a law enforcement center is a lot less than the per square foot cost of an incarceration facility. So that's that's kind of a you know a, a concern there. And then of course finally, you know, we're really not, I think that there may be money. Um, you know, Senator Rush, I had this discussion with him trying to figure out what's going on in the legislature. And he told me that um, they had set aside, and this is not in the bill, but he told me that they had set aside $80 million for local correctional facilities. Um, and that they would not appropriate or spend that um, immediately, that they wanted to see the shape um, that uh, the correction system was moving in next. So, I, you know, I guess in light of uncertainties, I, I think that we should probably vote to reconsider, um, you know, the, the entire um, bond, bond issue. And, um, and, and, you know, I, I think get involved in, in this process. I mean, I, I would very, I would very much like to meet with that committee um, at some point this summer. So I don't know, Kelsey, if you've, if you, what you want to add to that. Sure. Uh, Kelsey Kelly Rice, Mayor Vermillion. I guess I would just pass on that we did have uh, a discussion at our last new meeting uh, about some of the numbers that were presented to us. Uh, Matt and Andy were there um, to answer some questions, and it, the the sense from the council was really that they felt like we needed more time. That looking at an April 23rd early voting um, day was very soon. Um, to be perfectly honest, half of us are up for re-election and have no time or capacity to devote to being part of that education effort um, during the, those, what is now essentially three weeks. Um, there is support for this project among the council, but it really felt like we need more time to be able to answer all of those questions. Um, and then just on the city side, time to be able to figure out how we will fund our portion of it, um, which, you know, because of the amount we're talking about is not something that we can pull together tomorrow, to be perfectly honest. And, and for the kind of uh, effort we're talking about, really, we would have had to have that pulled together to be able to talk to people about two months ago, and, and we're not going to be able to have it even next week or two weeks from now. So when people ask me questions about how is the city park like, I, I don't know, I don't have those answers yet. And I wanna be able to answer that confidently um, and, and be part of that process. Um, you know, I, I express to Steve and I'll express to all of you, I'm perfectly willing to be part of that, that effort to get the word out and to educate people. Um, but, you know, we are not in a position to be able to do that with the ground run, hitting the ground running tomorrow. And, and that's really what would have to happen. Phyllis, you had sent an email on why that Nebraska or that uh, West River jail was more expensive. Um, actually, in looking, I found it in two different places. Number one, it states a hundred bed with expansion, possible expansion to 200. So that's building in a possible expansion, not at the 38 and it was had already been raised to 41.3. Um, I also found that it was like a 4% contingency and no cost on land purchase. And there were two or three other items that weren't included in the cost. So there's, we have to be careful in what we're comparing. Um, I'm hearing also that people are totally upset with how much their taxes are raising from the school bond on the other side. And, you know, in a mood to say no to anything right now. So that frightens me. I, I think I'll stop there at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure where your information came from. My information comes from Senate Bill 32. Um, and it does include the purchase of 20 acres of land, um, the uh, planning, site preparation, design, construction, furnishing, and equipping um, of, uh, uh, you know, of a correctional facility. And, um, 
you know, it includes heating, air conditioning, plumbing, water, sewer, electric facilities, architectural and engineering services, and other services and improvements as may be required. And it appropriated the sum of $38,308,804 um, to, uh, to, do, to do these things. And I, I know that that 38.3 million was an increase from the previous year, which had been at 28 point something million. Um, so they did update the figures for 2022. Um, and so these numbers were good as of uh, January of 2022. Thought, if you don't mind, I might suggest that, um, I don't know if we're, we're doing an apples to apples comparison. I really know little or nothing about this Rapid City project, but I would suggest that there is definitely an economy of numbers involved. Um, in number of housing units with more people in them. Also would suggest that that facility is probably a minimal security facility and not as, as uh, requiring the security as a jail. So I'd like to know more about it. I really know nothing, but, but I imagine that uh, before we try to compare them as apples to apples, we need to learn a lot more about it. But that might I explain some of that. Yeah, I, I agree too, but I, you know, I, I was just shocked. Um, I, you know, I'll just, I'll just say I, I was shocked by the number. And um, I think you're right that uh, they were looking at work release, um, uh, you know, a, a, an incarcerate, a, a sort of, I think, minimum to medium um, uh, 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 security level, and they were looking at substantial work release. Um, so, so I, and I agree that it's not apples to apples, but it's a pretty stark difference. Um, and that, that, you know, that really, really concerns me. I mean, it, and, you know, it was for two, 208 inmates. Where's that at in the bill? I can't find it online. Um, so Senate bill 32. Yeah, I've got it pulled up here. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Okay. That one is Senate bill, uh, Senate concurrent resolution 608. That was the one that had, no, wait a minute. No, that's the correctional plan plan process. Okay, yeah, no, this is this is the one, and it failed. Um, it's Senate Bill Thirty Two, and Section One has the twenty acres of property with the description. Mm -hmm. Section Two has all of the services incorporated, and Section Three um, uh, appropriates from the general fund the sum of thirty eight point three plus million. Um, in order to, to uh, do sections one and two. Okay, this one says 28 million. Right, it was updated in January. But so where, that's does it, an older where does it say the 200 sale, cells or beds? Yeah, that actually, the 200 was in a news release um, that quoted the governor's office and it, the number was 208. And was this gonna build the whole jail? And this, this you know, I, I only, I know what I read in the bill um, and the bill says, yes, it was the entire jail. But I think Andy's right that, you know, we need to do some comparisons. Um, but I, I, I was just, I, I, I was taken aback. Um, and this, the, so the, the number you had, the 28 million was the number that they had earlier, um, you know, before the session started. And then in January, it looks like, they updated it to 38.3 million. So we know that those numbers were, um, you know, early in uh, 2022. So we know that th that number is current. It's, that's not an old number. So I think it's, that, again, we can't compare that to what we're doing. So right. I, mean, I, I don't know right. if it's relevant this time. To me, it isn't. But- uh, It becomes an educational issue. That's very good. Great. Right, exactly. I guess I have a question to you, Dick. Can you, if we wait till November, do you have any idea of how much, if your numbers are correct, and I, I feel they're correct, I wish they weren't, but I feel that they probably are. Can you give us an idea of how much you would think that our costs would go up? Do you have any, I know you'd be just drawn out of the sky, but you know, cause I, I really feel the interest rates is gonna go up. That, 
So, so I guess we'd look at it from a, just a, just a clarification from the starting point that we had. Our numbers were based on a, a project in Nebraska that was uh, bid about two weeks before we gave the number and they were actually bid by <laughs> subcontractors on an actual project, not a budget. So I think the, the starting point we have is unfortunately pretty accurate. I mean, they were based on actual <coughs> bids on a very similar project. Um, so uh, then as far as how far they'd go up, I think we're probably even more uncertain than we were a few weeks ago. We got the reports back from January, 3% inflation just in January, just the month of January, not the year, just the month. So when we look ahead, I think there's, you know, um, there's no more certainty than we had a few weeks ago, if anything, maybe a little less certainty. Uh, so I don't, um, you know, if I were to estimate out, I don't know it's going to be, you know, if we, if we compare it to what it was, you know, the past six months, I'm not sure it's going to change. Um, so it's, it's really, it's just like guessing where interest rates are going to be. I mean, there's sure a general, general uh, thought that interest rates are going to go up and how high are they going to go up? Well, you know, we don't know. Uh, nobody knows, but I think it, it goes into the uncertain category that it, it will, if we delay it six months, um, it will cost, you know, if I were to just pick a number out of the air, air, I mean, it might be, you know, six to 10%. Um, but I think that it's the interest rate thing is actually, if you look at, at the end of the day for a taxpayer, that interest rate thing, that, that, that's a real big number. So that, that could be bigger than the construction number in terms of the variable on that. I know that wasn't very helpful. I'm not really giving a, really a lot of, a lot of, uh, well, know, just a half a percent, there. just a half a percent is 2 million on the project. Yeah. If interest goes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the important question here is not now versus six months, it's six months versus never. That's, we have a lot of uncertainty about where things are going to go and what they're going to cost. I have a great deal of certainty that this is going to fail in June, like over 90% certainty that it will fail. And at that point, we have no jail ever. And so the price of now versus later. I'm not sure if that's the right comparison. Um, I mean, that's the uh, large. This, this is our last. This is our last chance. I really believe it's our last chance. And that, if we don't, if we don't do it right, just the fact that there's so many questions that we don't have the answers to, and we don't have time to train people to go out and have those conversations. Right now, if somebody comes up to me and says, "Well, right now the school is being built at you know 200 and some per square foot. Why you have 400 square foot per square foot in this?" I would be like, "I don't, I don't know." I guess you're gonna to have to ask somebody else. I gotta go do other things because I wasn't ready for that. You know, I mean, we are not ready to have those conversations and the amount of organizing that it's gonna take, it cannot be done in like it would have to happen tonight, essentially. Well, I mean, it would have had to happen a month ago. It, it just, there's money to raise. There's a website to make, there's uh, materials to create. There's people to train, to go out and talk about these things. That is the only way to pass something of this size. And we simply do not have the time or the information available. So uh, I just want to make sure that we're looking at the right thing. I understand that there's a lot of concern that this is going to cost more, but that's assuming that it would pass, which I just do not, I really, really strongly believe it will not. But if it costs more in November, it won't pass either. I don't care how much education you do. I think that there's still opportunities. I mean, I guess if we just want to, part of it is like, I can't, I can't commit this the city with so many unknowns between now and when you guys need to know. I do, you know, like we just have so many other things to figure out. Um, I really want to see this happen. I think it's really important for our community. Uh, and I think that the, the consequences of not are, are really huge. And so I want to do it right. I, I think that throwing it at the wall right now would just be a grave mistake. I think that. But You know, I understand what you're saying, Kelsey. I totally get it. But the same token, what really, it, it just scares me when you, when we debated this earlier, you know, to go to 39 or to go to 41, <clears throat> people are smart enough to do the math. They're not, if they already know it's 39, if I say 40, a million dollars is probably not going to make, change their mind one way or the other. But if we get out there, what worries me is that we hit November and we have a number out here that's going to be, 43 million, and that's very logically could be. We don't know that, but it could very easily be that. 
Yeah, then is that I don't think that's gonna I don't think it makes any difference in numbers <laughs> as much as I know what you're saying to educate people. People need to know what's going on. I it just worries me that it's not gonna make any difference if we if we have a bigger number, they're even gonna say, well, they didn't do anything. Yeah, I, but I, I also think it's likely that um the city will not bond the entire dollar amount, which takes some money off the bond. Um and you know, the second thing is that I, I think. Uh, the state is very seriously considering um, reconfiguring, right, the way that, um, uh, you know, inmates um, are housed. And they're looking at housing them in smaller places, which actually could mean, for example, an income stream um, for the county. And those are, those are big uncertainties. And, you know, it's, it's a fairly high dollar amount. I mean, we're, you know, they, 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 they have set aside $80 million. But in and, that, they didn't necessarily, when I read it, they didn't necessarily say that that was going to counties. No, There's and, nothing in there that says it's going for counties. Exactly. Wow. No, but that's, it's How, not in there saying that any of that $80 million is going to counties. Right. However, so our, they set aside money for, for prisoners. Yeah. doesn't say where it's going. Right. But our state senator tells me um, that in those discussions, um, they were looking at the eighty million dollars. I mean, obviously, it's, it's it's not enough for the state to build facilities, but right. that eighty million dollars, they they were looking at trying to have some kind of a system where they could pay the state could partner with counties and pay for counties to house some prisoners closer uh, right. to where to where they live. Um, and I think we're right. We're right in that. We're right in that neighborhood. We're right in that space. Um, so I, you know, I, I just think there's enough uncertainty here um, that that we ought to, you know, we. The, the reality think again. is, I don't see any path forward in June that can succeed. I really don't. The questions are too much. Every time I ask someone asks me a question, I, I can't give them an answer yet because I don't know what the city is going to do. I don't really know all the mechanics of the bonding issues yet. And we've got, to, we've got to get the whole team up for it. I do appreciate the concern you have about a bigger number come November. But I think our chances of succeeding, even with that bigger number, are going to be better in November than the smaller number in June. Good. I, I really do. It's, it's not going to be an easy battle. It's going to be a lot of work this summer, a lot of public meetings, a lot of sharing of information, a lot of time being spent by hopefully a larger and larger group of people involved. But I just don't see a path to success for June. I really don't. I know what we went through last year in this process, and we started off on a very bad foot already. Dave Lies's article really set the tone for this whole debate. And we need to step back and pull back and re-argue and represent. This is not just a jail. It's a more complex building, yet everyone sees it as just a jail. And there are issues at hand that we have time, we would have time in the government to look at and explore. But it's, I, and I'm not promising you success in November. Gosh, no, I'm not. But I can tell you your chances of success are going to be a heck of a lot better in November than they will be in June. And that's coming from a person. I know Bob is in the same boat. The mayor is in the same boat. We're all willing to put the time in as much as we can whatever date you pick, but it's going to fail in June. It really is. And it's going to be, it's going to go down in flames. It, the writing is there. I've not talked to a person yet that understands the project well enough to really come up with a conclusion to say yes. I come up with a lot of people that say they're not going to support it because it's too much for just a jail. Because why? It's just a jail. And it's not. It's much more complex than it. It's a big educational mission that we've got. There is a lot of work to be done. I have my hand up here. I don't know if I can chime oh. in here. I don't want to interrupt Matt. Go ahead, Matt. I'll, I'll keep my hand up, though. I can't see that from here. <laughs> um, you know, I, I do not envy your decision. There's there's no clear cut, great decision to make. Um, I respect all your service to the community and it's a hard time. Uh, two things to remember about that number. First of all, that number is a big enough number they can guarantee it. 
So, and, and I know we were hiring these people and of course everything's out the door. That's part of how their strategy is that they never, that they never over, or go over their amount whenever they're building. And the second thing is, is that from what we have now, and I think Andy can speak to this, to what we would have, even if we had to cut what we think are essential things is going to put us better than we are today. Um, and there, 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 we can look at that again and see what else we can come up with to cut during the same time period. Um, I, I think you're right, floating the number over and over again. I think you need to pick a number and stick with it. And inflation began, and we're just going to have to build what we do. Um, you know, the state, they do things totally different than we do. They build them, you know, pretty much. And then uh, if they go over, they go over because they have a lot bigger a lot bigger purse than we do. Um, so I, I just, those are the two things. It's kind of like, I, I don't think, you know, after we got down here and I've talked to a lot of people and uh, been to the city council and everything else, I just don't think it'll pass if we go in June at all, no matter what we do. We only have two months. Um, I hate to say, I, I mean, in a way, I want this to be over one way or the other after many, many years of doing this. I mean, Andy and I have I think this was almost one of our first discussions when I came here 10 years ago. Um, but uh, but I really want to see this for this community going forward and the, for police department especially. And I think it's the right thing to have a jail in Clay County. I know it's expensive. Um, I know it's a hard, hard to understand, but there's a lot of education on the numbers. Um, you know, just multiplying 750,000 by 30 years doesn't get you anywhere near the number it's going to cost not to build this building. That ignores both the inflation and the increasing people that we've seen for, well, the entire history of the city. So it ignores basically double inflation. So it's going to cost people a lot more, but they don't know that because that's all they saw was the article saying what we're paying last year times 30. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It's like saying no costs are going up. And that we're not going to inc need increase, you know, and, and there are other opportunities, I think, that are being seriously looked at that, that could play a factor in this. Um, so that, that would be my two cents. Andy. I, um, okay, I uh, going to jump in on uh, on a couple things. There's discussion of state money. You know, I believe that there's going to be uh, quite a bit of discussion of what we can do with incarceration in the state. And I've always believed, I still do, and I believe that those making decisions will come to this conclusion that the best uh, way to um, cooperate with the state in terms of penitentiary inmates is to house those inmates in county jails, not the other way around. We can't house pretrial inmates uh, with convicted felons in a state prison. There's also no economy involved there. You would have um, a few few facilities over large regions, which would not solve counties problems. The alternative and the better alternative is uh, that the state house in county jails, and um, that would create revenue for the counties. And also, uh, as has been mentioned, uh, put people closer to home. Um, this, this facility in Rapid City, I'm sure is involved, involving uh, giving w uh, female worker lease inmates access to jobs that don't exist in peer because it's the only place they can be housed. Um, if we spread those throughout the state, we're going to see people able to maybe even get their old job back while they're still uh, being held and serving that time. So, uh, and, and another thing I think will come from that will be um, money that would be allocated to county jail construction that will probably be um, an in incentivized to have regional facilities. And I'm not, a, I'm not a proponent of regional jails. I don't think it solves our problem unless that regional jail is in your county. Uh, if you put the regional jail in another county, you're really doing uh, nothing but transporting your inmates all the same. At the same time, if you have a county that has few inmates, it's not cost effective to have the jail in their county. Another thing is a, a, a minimally populated county will have staffing issues if they have a jail. Uh, the idea I hear often in meetings, why don't we have a regional jail in Beersford? And I can guarantee you, you wouldn't be able to staff a jail in Beersford. And... Uh, uh, so that in mind, I, I've spoken with the uh, Turner County Sheriff about a regional jail, not just a contract uh, for housing inmates. And um, he is on board with the idea. His commission has actually approached him. They want him to build a jail. 
he does not want to build a jail. As he sits here now, he's got, uh, I think, six inmates in custody today. Uh, he spikes at times into the teens. Uh, with Sioux Falls growth approaching his county, he will need more beds. He will be exceeding 20, I'm sure, within, within 10 years, I'll bet. Uh, that's me speculating. But he will need more beds in the future. We, we just know that uh, with, the, with the growth they're going to see uh, in that area. He, he thinks a regional jail uh, would be appropriate. And this would be a partnership jail. I, I, uh, in our discussion, we discussed modeling the, uh, the 14 county JDC compact we signed in 1995, uh, which I think was very successful. Um, the uh, Morton Burley County Jail in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, I've toured that. It's a, it's a fantastic facility built in partnership between two counties. Uh, it's located in Bismarck. Uh, Sheriff Luke agrees with me that we'd have an easier time staffing a jail in Clay County than in Parker. Um, also, with the preponderance of the inmates being ours, it, it makes sense that that be located here. What he would get would be a seat at the table on an advisory board, uh, uh, guaranteed beds. Uh, this would require a larger jail than we're talking about, but I'm but I would I would. Uh, we'll look at some numbers, but I would say probably in the neighborhood of a, a 50 to 60 bed jail um, rather than what we have. Uh, but Turner County then would absorb part of the debt and, and uh, would, would, um, would share that with us. So I, I say this because I think that we would need to have at least explored this and had this uh, serious discussion with the only county in our area that would uh, partner with us anyway. Lincoln County is in a different judicial circuit. And I doubt that they're gonna gonna partner with us, although it'd be worth a conversation. But uh, but I think that there's some real possibility of a, a regional cooperation with Turner County, which would reduce our share of the debt, um, and that would also put us in better um, you know better position to receive any state money that might come our way. So that said, this isn't going to happen tonight or tomorrow. And, and uh, but it's, it's a discussion we have to have because I don't think I've ever discussed this issue in public and not had somebody discuss a regional jail. And uh, I think it's a question that has to be answered. Um, beyond that, uh, just chiming in, I, uh, it was Kelsey that said earlier, and I, I have to agree. I think that the, uh, I think this is gonna fail in June. I want it to pass. There's nobody that wants this project completed more than me and nobody that wants to be done with it more than me. It's been, it's been, as Matt mentioned, uh, it was an early, early conversation. Almost immediately, I think we went to lunch and talked about it on his first day. Uh, I had been having these conversations for years before Matt came, and, I, and it's the time has come. We have to complete it, but I don't think it's going to happen. I don't want to fail. Uh, it might fail in November as well, but that would be after a lot more effort. Uh, it's easy for me to say that everybody understands it because I've been living it for so many years that I, I, I know the numbers, I, I, I dream about them. I, I, but, and it's hard for me to understand that other people aren't as, as tuned in because when they talk to me, the uh, general uh, conversation I hear is when are we gonna get that jail built? Uh, everybody supports me and pats me on the back in person. Um, I don't hear this dissent that other people hear, but I'm hearing from other people that there is dissent. And, um, and, and I have concern that uh, we'll make this one run at it in June and fail and, and then we will be done because we don't have a project to bring back in November that has any viability. What are we gonna do? Reduce it by 200 square feet, you know, 2000 square feet? Are we gonna, you know, what are we gonna do differently in November than what we have now to make it something that people would, would uh, take? Uh, along that line, um, I also am not convinced that we're gonna see a higher number by November, I think that as Matt said, we'll do what we can, but honestly, we've done what we can. Uh, I really don't wanna give in on any square footage because we've cut as much as we could. At the same time, if there's any sort of um, aesthetic things that we could cut, I can live without it. Uh, Matt and I talked about a steel building at the beginning. Uh, that's, it's, it's a bad idea, but in terms of our, our, our functionality, we could, we could survive in it. People don't want it and a tornado knock it down or high winds. And, um, but I think that we could look at, at changes. I've got, I've got proposals from every other architect and every other contractor that, that talk to us about this job. And I think that there could come a point and Dick would disagree with me. I'm confident Dick will disagree. But if we go back and say, we're not gonna give you $42 million to build it. 
you know, we, we have other people, we have other contractors. We, we could go back to the drawing board and revisit this. And uh, maybe, maybe uh, everybody's got so much work uh, that they don't want the job, but I have to believe there's somebody that does. And so all we keep hearing about is lesser, lesser expensive projects. And I don't think I ever hear about more expensive projects. And so I, um, I, I think that there's a lot that we can talk about over the next few months. And so I think that it's more important that we pass, pass this than pass it now or fail now. And so I think that, I think it's Kelsey was right that we're talking about possibly passing in November or certainly failing in June. Okay, unless you have questions, I'll, I'll be quiet. Hey, well, Andy, when you were talking earlier about, uh, you and I talked the other day, you had mentioned that about Turner County at that time, we talked a little bit about it. So do you think there would be any opportunity between now and November before the, if we, if we go out to November, uh, that we could get an agreement with Turner County? Well, I, I certainly do. I, um, the, the question might be, and this is the thing, we have to, we have to make a decision because they might have to pass a bond. Mm -hmm. if, if they're going to pick up, uh, you know, what, uh, five to $10 million of this project, I don't know. You know, they, they would have no stake in the uh, administrative space. They have no interest in that. They're, they would only be interested in, in, a, in a portion of the uh, jail portion of the, of the project. Um, but so, you know, we're not going to get $20 million out of Turner County. That doesn't, that doesn't even sound fair, right. but, um, but uh, you know, somewhere in the, in the five to 10 million, I think might be, might be a reasonable number that we could talk to them about, but they might need a bond for that. I, I don't know if they've got that in the bank. Uh, they might be able to opt out to cover that without a bond. Cause as we found, you know, that, that was an option if our project cost less. So, but we need to, we need to talk to them about that, see if they're on board, how they would, pay for their share, just like Kelsey was talking about the city paying for their share. So um, they definitely, uh, uh, the sheriff is is sincerely interested and he, he knows his commission wants a jail. And he believes that they would be interested in, in the facility, especially in our location that we're talking about, very convenient for them. But if Turner County does that, that doesn't mean our project gets cheaper. Even if they, because you just said we have to build a bigger jail if they come on. I don't think 10 more beds would cost $10 million. Well, 5 million, but you I said he's going to be up to 20 million or 20 beds in about 10, 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'd have to do some number crunching on that, but I'm certain that uh, we wouldn't increase to the point where it would be a wash. Otherwise, you know, we're going to make them share that. I mean, they're going to, they're going to share administrative space, the, uh, in, in, in the jail, the booking, the, the circulation, the, 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 the jailer space. I mean, they're going to share in the cost of the construction of the jail, not simply beds. Otherwise, it's not a regional jail. Yeah, I, I, I like the way you're thinking, Andy, and I, I love the idea of partnering with Turner, particularly given what um, the state legislature is obviously thinking about at this point. I mean, they, they, they're, they're moving in a direction. Um, and they're, they're, they, they appear to be getting ready to, you know, if, if, if they do move in that direction to help to subsidize regionalization. Um, and, 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 and I think part of their interest, if I'm, if I'm reading, you know, the comments in the newspapers and the bill correctly, I think, uh, you know, part of what they're thinking is that they want to be able to send people to uh, local jails um, you know, for longer stays rather than, and you know, on a on a, a rent basis, they don't want to build another Sioux Falls Penitentiary. I mean, they don't want to build these huge places that are inconvenient, where families can't, um, you know, visit regularly, where you know they can't have the kind of work release that helps people when they're when they're leaving prison. I mean, being local makes a big difference and it makes a big difference to, uh, you know, to Clay County citizens. So I, I, I really like the way you're thinking. These, this isn't a new, mm -hmm. a new concept. We've had these discussions uh, years ago um, about counties housing um, state inmates, you know, for a cost. And at the time, and even as we sit here today, counties don't have the beds. And so there, there has to be some construction at the county level, but 
I think if uh, the state could look at that in, in terms of uh, building new prisons and staffing them, you know, do they knock down the old prison or do they build a bigger one or do they have additional ones? And so then Department of Corrections can't fill all their positions. They don't want to build new prisons. They can't hire anybody to, to work in them. Uh, so there's definitely some economy to, to push that money to counties and, and then have the counties house those inmates, whether there'd be uh, construction money and then obviously uh, a per day um, boarding rate. And again, we want to have this conversation because we need to know the size of jail we need to build. Because we yeah, might you need know, more beds then. There's, there's one more thing I'd like to add, which is that we, we have Lewis and Clark Behavioral Health here. And I know what other states have done frequently um, is they've combined their state pre-release program. So pre-release, they send inmates to a local jail for the last six months or year of their term. And then they contract with organizations like Lewis and Clark Behavioral Health um, to build bridges back to the community. And I, you know, that would be a dream for me um, to, see, to see that happen so that when every inmate left, um, they would leave ha having worked out where they're gonna stay the first night, how they're gonna eat, and um, you know where where they're going to work, and uh, you know if there was a way to do those three things, you know we know from research we would reduce recidivism. Um, so I you know I, that's just dreaming, um, but uh, but 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 I think that 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 would be a possibility in the future. I'd like to say that I I really support the possibility of co-oping with Turner County. Um, there is the point also that the state will not assist a jail that does not exist. If we do not have a facility, those funds will go to other facilities. It, yeah. the point that we need to get this facility built. Yeah, I think though that the, they're, the money that they're talking about is for construction. Um, they're not they're not talking about uh, subsidies. What they're talking about is construction. So what they're looking at is to incentivize construction in counties that are willing to cooperate with other counties. So, 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 so I, my concern is exactly opposite. It's that we would uh, go ahead and start building a jail. And then the state would say, well, for anybody who in the future wants to build a jail and doesn't have the money, we'll subsidize it. And we could lose out that way. And, and I, I will counter that, that that would be three to five years down the road. No, in their state. Yeah, I think what they're looking at is um, uh, the summer study to determine the direction, and they've already created the um, the fund, uh, the the fund that um, it, uh, it it's what is it called Corrections uh, Facilities Fund, um, and they've set aside uh, eighty million dollars for it. So I, I you know I think they're actually looking at this sooner rather than later. They have a big problem because their women's prison is. I, you know, I don't know, it's like over 120% of capacity now, and they're triple selling. So they, they really, the state has, has a real reason to push this. <clears throat> I came in here today with the idea that we go in June, to be honest with you. That was my whole thing. And I was hoping that if, if I was going to change, I was hoping somebody would convince me. Okay. I, Steve's convinced me somewhat. I, I like the idea of the Turner situation. And Andy and I had talked about that, like I said the other day. And um, we didn't get into it as quite as deep as he just got done saying there. So that's made a lot of difference. But um, it worries me the cost, no matter what it is. That's one of my biggest concerns. Also, do not want to see it fail. Absolutely, that's the last thing because I really like to get this off. This things going. I don't put a lot of stake in the state. I'm sorry. <laughs> I there's 80 million dollars out there. They're going to spend 75 thousand dollars to do a study this summer. I've seen their studies go nowhere. We spent years, not what three years ago, I suppose. We went up there and they were going to give us a half cent sales tax, and that went nowhere. 
I mean, and that had a sunset on it and everything. So I, I don't put a lot of stake that we're going to get the 80, a part of that 80 million. I hope I'm wrong because it'd be great to have some money in pollution. And I think that's what the state should do. My legislators have not made me feel real comfortable with that. Um, so I guess we need a motion here if we're gonna change. I'll make a motion that we change to, to November. So I think- so, the motion has to actually have a date to it. You don't have to have it. So I, th I think what we can do is what, it's a motion for reconsideration. Is that? So I'll, I'll make a motion to suspend it for further consideration. Does that sound so right? So it would be what a motion to reconsider resolution 2022-06. Yep, I'll second. What I would like to see, are we in for comments now? Yeah, I have a motion in a second. What? Yes, go ahead. Oh, I would like- Microphone is off, sorry, go ahead. I was going to, where are we? Um, I would like to see a list of 10 to 20 of the questions that are being asked and then find so that we have some answers to those. I'd also like to know actually how much as a county commissioner are each of us allowed to say, um, whether publicly or online or et cetera. Um, I know in the past there has been question on what should and shouldn't be supported or said from a county commissioner. So I'd like that clarified. And then we strongly, as quickly as possible, put together a, a sincere educational program or directions. With that, I could support. So Mike, just for clarification, what was your motion? I guess my motion is to. Rescind. Was it to rescind? Rescind. Okay. Yeah, it has to be to rescind the bond resolution, the resolution. whatever number it is. It's okay. Resolution. What is it? 2206. 2206. I guess I really don't want to set a date, do I? Probably not. No. We'd have to pass a new resolution. Yeah, today. so it wouldn't matter. So what you do is just rescind the one that you passed okay. at the last meeting and then pass a new one when you know when you want to have the election. Okay. And what dollar amount? Bob. Quick question. What impact would this have, if any, on your land option? It, the option ends. The option ends? Yep, we won't have an option on that land. You need to get it over. We'll have to if we're going to go continue with this. But that doesn't mean the price is going to be the same. But it's all, all, all that property is overpriced, not just, just. But it would give you time to look at possibly another location. How long does our option good for, you know? June or July, I believe. Okay. That's something we have to check into though, isn't it? Yep. The more we change, the longer and harder it will get. I know. And what we need now, if we are rescinding this, is a very strong statement as to the positiveness of why we're doing it. Not the negatives. <laughs> Option expires on the first day of September. Okay. First of September, the option expires. 
this is this is nothing but um me thinking out loud and so i apologize for that but if um if there's a concern that the land would go up could uh, any of the relief money that you have be used to just purchase the land that's what lincoln county did it blew up in their face is buy the land first just so you have the land and you're not concerned about that yeah so I, I think that's idea. yeah that's an that's an option i think we'd want to consider closer to september Mm -hmm. is it September 1st is our options are correct yes. so is there any possibility I realize that you don't like to have special elections because it costs us money but is it possible to have something in August your turnout will be terrible that's what I'm it worried would of. it wouldn't work yeah. I'm just throwing it out there I would never recommend a special election for something like that if you can combine it with the primary or general yeah. that makes sense I mean, yeah, I understand. It just wouldn't be good. And really, having an election in the general in November is going to be the best option because that's the best voter turnout. You don't get the turnout in a primary like you do in a general. Okay. So, you know, versus having 22% of the voters turn out, you might have closer to 70. I guess exactly. I go with but Go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. I was just going to say in the last, last uh, bond issue we had, as a rural voter, there was nothing on the ballot except for our issue. And of course I had strong feelings and cared deeply about it. So I voted. I can't imagine how many people didn't bother if that was the only reason for them to drive to the courthouse. So uh, yeah, November, November will give us a better turnout. I do feel that we need to go back to the committee that voted it down in the first place and say, you said you supported this. Where are you? <laughs> They've been awfully silent. Bob. The other thing that I, uh, first of all, Bill, the idea of getting a, a positive list put together, I think is excellent. And I think that's something that uh, Steve's committee can uh, can uh, work on and, and, uh, and produce. The other thing that really, really bothers me is the Davis Lias editorial, and it's very disappointing. And I would hope someone can talk to him and tell him if he's going to do something like that, he needs to use the right method, the right numbers, because he was he was way off with the method that he used to calculate that. My opinion piece that I submitted in response hopefully addresses some of that issue. If it's published, <laughs> it's, it's the damage is done. Well, I think the orders need a clarification. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Annie. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. No. Motion passes. Anything else? Can we, if someone take the lead on making that list and then send it to each and every to add or, you know, compose it further? The to get it is still meeting tonight. So we will continue working on that process. Great. Still meeting over at City Hall. Yep. I got the key. I feel powerful. I mean, there's, there's not time to wait. I mean, even if we go to November, it's still a very tight window. So we're going to start meeting. Well, minds have already started to form on it, so it needs to be, you know, starting right away. And we only have, you know, once a week in the newspaper, and I don't know where else you put it out, but. Well, 
What were you going to say, Bob? No matter what dollar amount we end up with, um, there's going to be people yeah. that are going to question it, not support it. I mean, you could say it's going to be built for half the cost, and they, they still vote against it. I've got my mind made up. Don't bother me with facts. That kind of that kind of thing. Well, I, I disagree with you. So I have a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. A motion and a second. Roll call. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. We're adjourned. <laughs>